was the first known entrepreneur. Why do I say that? Before the beginning began, where was God? Huh? Because so many people say God lives in heaven. And I tell God, I ask the people, I don't believe that. Because where was God? Before the heavens and the earth were created. And the Bible says, God, the way God was yesterday, so it is today. And that's how it will be forever. That means wherever he was before the beginning began, that's where he is. He never changes. <laughs> so God is where he used to be. So before the beginning began, God was somewhere. God eternity. A place where you cannot, it's not bounded by time. That was where God was. But God needed to create a relationship. He needed to create a product. He wanted a product. And what was the product? Heaven and earth. So he created heaven and created earth, but discovered that earth was without form, void, and that darkness was upon the face of the deep. There were three major challenges that confronted the product called earth. The product called earth had no form, was empty, and then no image. <laughs> No knowledge about it. <laughs> God could not tell anything about what was happening. And that's what happens to you as an entrepreneur. When you want to start out business, you want to start a business, the first thing that happens to you is that one, you lack complete knowledge. Now, let me tell you now to go, and go, go into cargo business. What do you know about cargo business? <laughs> Maybe a prophet just came to you now and say, the way I'm seeing you now, you are going to prosper powerfully in cargo business. Buying and selling from abroad. The question is, what do you know about buying and selling from abroad? <laughs> you don't know. So which means, if you don't know what it is, then that means you are too broke to even undertake that kind of a business. That means you are empty. Because even if you have one million naira in your account now, and they say you should go into a kind of business, until you know what kind of business it is, you don't know how much you need. So, assuming they told you to car, enter car selling business, to be importing cars from the US to Nigeria, and they now told you that the first set of cars you have to buy must be like 20, and each of them goes for like 10 million, and then multiply 10 million, multiply by 20, and you have 1 million in your account. You are too broke <laughs> to go into that kind of business. That means you are empty. And then, you can't, there is no form. <laughs> because you don't even know that this is not exist. <laughs> that is, there will be too much chaos in your mind about that. But the first thing to do is what? You do what God did. And God said, let there be what? Light. The first thing God did, God went to school. God went to school himself <laughs> on what was needed to do what? To bring earth back. So the Bible, the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. So as an entrepreneur, what do you do? The first thing to do is to look for what? Knowledge about that business. Go into that. Go into that God told you that you are going to go into kunu making business. Does not mean kunu making will work in your hand. If you don't go and find out how to do it, you must go and find out how to do it. You must go and find out how, how do they do kunu. I mean, how do they market Kunu? <laughs> Who are the people that drink it? <laughs> Can I get some samples of how it looks? So there are so many things you go and find out. Yes, the skill is there. You are able to do something. That you can make hair. Doesn't mean you will prosper as a hairdresser. I hope you know. There are some people that they are fantastic hairdressers. That is, when they make your hair, you will know that <laughs> this is genius. But they are as poor as them. <laughs> Why? They don't get customers. Because they, they have not learned the art of marketing. And not just there's marketing product, there's marketing personality, there's marketing yourself. It's one thing to market a product. Hey, come, you see, these this, uh, matches, it works like fire. If you strike it once, it works. But how do you market yourself? <laughs> 
It's easy to market a product, but how do you market your brand, you as a brand? So if you look at these things, they are things that you need to go and learn. Some people think it's by buying a phone, smartphone, and then they are social media magnets. <laughs> I met one day, one day I was there. Ah, see, I'm a powerful girl on social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I said, Do you think it's my Bible? I said, Look, I said, How many times have you, have you, you know, made sales using your Instagram profile? I said, We are still coming, we are still coming. I said, said, You will never make sales if you don't learn it. I said, Do you even understand digital marketing? I said, Digital marketing, okay. What's that one? Hey, you don't. So there, there are street entrepreneurs that just jump into things anyhow, but there are structured entrepreneurs. So we have two of them: structured entrepreneurs, and we have street entrepreneurs. Street entrepreneurs are people that just you just dump into any business and you succeed. I call those people boys. That, you know, <laughs> that, that you deal in containers. And many of them just dump into businesses and they make money. That you make money in business doesn't make you an entrepreneur. Doesn't make you an entrepreneur. There are so much things, there are too many things that you know has to go into entrepreneurship. And that's what God was trying to show us. That the first thing is what? Knowledge. What I say? Knowledge. You need to find out what must I do? What do they do? What do they do that make them this stick in this business? Okay, I do website design. It's not everybody you say website design. Before when I first started, that's what I had to do. I just say website, I just I back up website to everybody. Before I now realize that it is not everybody that needs a website. <laughs> it's not everybody. It's not everybody that needs a website. There are some people today when I go to their business and I talk to them, even though I know they need a website, but because of their mindsets, I will market my website to them. I'll market email to them. <laughs> I'll market Gmail to them. I'll market Facebook to them. I'll market Instagram to them. Because I know they can read you let you see those things on their phone, so it's easy. But by the time you market website to them, and you're telling them they are going to be paying so 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 amount every year, and you give them the price, they will say, more, I'm <laughs> But there are some other people, other persons, immediately you just say, they are telling you, sir, I need, why? Because they understand, they have the knowledge. So anything that you are doing, the first thing to look for is what? Knowledge. knowledge. Nowadays, people don't value seminars, they don't value trainings. Why? Because they are just, everybody wants to pray fast, believe God, and it happens. You know, I went out, I went out, I won 20 souls. After I won 20 souls, just like that, I just received a call. When I got a call, they told me to come and resume in one place like that, and they are paying me 40 million every month. That's like the kind of miracles everybody has been but one thing that you will never, you will not really, you have not found out, is that the quality of miracles that come to you is a product of the things you have been doing. A man that has been looking for international jobs and has been praying to God, I'm not even praying to God, he doesn't even pray to God. He has been doing everything that matters to get an international job. He has done all certifications. He has. He has connections, he has done everything he needs to do to get an international job. But something is just creating a brick wall. He gets to church and they tell him, we souls, and he carries himself in, in his humility and he goes out to win souls. The winning of souls will what? Remove that demonic barrier that has been making this hard for him. To break through, he will just remove a farm and just pop, he just gets an international opening. He comes to share the testimony. You that have not paid one price <laughs> to even get a local job, you're not saying I claim that. You can't claim that one. Make you try out it tomorrow. That is 2,000 pastors laying leg on you, <laughs> plus bishop the body on you. It will happen. That's true. It will happen. It was, so the, the quality of your harvest is a function, is a product of the what? Of your investment in what? In seed. The kind of seed you are sowing today will determine the kind of what? The harvest of miracles you get tomorrow. 
They have this available. So what are you doing now? What are you doing now? You are reading books. You are reading. I want first class. You did everything. You got 190 in jam. Mysteriously, mysteriously, you got into university with a 190. And you keep doing, and you keep doing. The first semester, you got 2.5 CGP. You still keep trying. You keep trying. You got 2 point something again. Second semester. Ah, see, God, what's happening? 200 level. You try, 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 try. You got 2 point something again. Ah, plus. Now, people, they get 5 points again. What's happening? And then one day, you found yourself in chapel. Or you found yourself in church. And somebody says, you give, must give your life to Christ. And you give your life to Christ. And you are like God. And now your son, God help me. And you have to share the word of God to people. And the next exam came. And you got five points. It is not that there is no five points have been in your destiny, six, but there's an there's an obstacle. There's something that has been obstructing it. That your spiritual connection now you now was tore that veil away. And then you're able to work as a, somebody will not say it's because you know, it's because he gave his life to Christ. That is why <laughs> you got five points. No, it's not just because he gave his life to Christ. It's because he has been doing what it takes to succeed. He has been doing what he was needed to succeed. But something was burying him. Without the one that you you have been sleeping. You sleep, you sleep, you go one point something, you have been sleeping, you chasing gas up and down, you go one point something, and now say, ah, this one that Paulaj gave his life to Christ. And uh, you got five points. That means if I give my life to Christ, you know what happened? When you give your life to Christ, you will get the baptism of seriousness. So when you give your life to Christ, that is, the baptism will not become serious with your academics. Will not come on you. You will not realize, ah, I've been sleeping. So you now start what? Walking. <laughs> so great to walk and do what is needed. Will not come on you. The spirit of an entrepreneur will not come on you. You will not be able to do the right things. Then suddenly, you will not be that's how it works. But if you don't understand these things, you just think, you just, I just, just give your life to Christ and then, you give your life to Christ and the grace of God will make you start where you're supposed to start. <laughs> you will start where, because if you were not hard working before, you will start getting hard, you will not become, because you can't break the rules. He says scriptures cannot work, cannot be broken. You can't break the rules. I pray that God will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you need that. So these are some of the things finally that we need to develop. If you want to develop an entrepreneurial spirit, number one, embrace God. Embrace God. Embrace what? God. You don't. I, I, I kept shouting. You must embrace God. You must, like I told that young lady, I say if God is out of the equation. If I pray for you, if I do anything for you, you will still feel. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because if God is out of the equation, everything else is, is finished. It's finished. No matter how strong you are as a. It's not like. Uh, just, ima- just imagine somebody like Messi. Just come on social media tomorrow that I have given my life to Jesus. <laughs> that Jesus is now my life. And then he goes out to do evangelism. Of a crusade. Just imagine how that stadium will be filled. Ah, that stadium will be That stadium will be filled. Why? Because the things that make for stardom is already in him, which he has been working on. The only problem is that he needs that thing that will make him kingdom relevant, which is salvation. But too many of us have salvation. But do we have the thing that made for, for kingdom relevance? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but it begins with what? God. So I can't overemphasize the need for God. You need God. You say, how shall a young man cleanse his ways? It's by what? Taking heed to the word, the word of God. You must, you must take heed to the word of God. When God's word is at the center of your soul, you are ready. You are a youth to let you for anything. No matter, even if you are going through challenges, forget it. As a child of God, your challenges are building blocks for your greatness. That's the truth. That's what I, you may not look it. Everybody see you, you don't look like somebody that matters. 
It even better. It even, I'm telling you, it's better to look like somebody that doesn't matter, but you carry something. That to look like somebody that matter, and you are empty. Because by the time you get to where you are going, you'll be embarrassed. Yeah. Do you know what it means for them to employ you as one looking at your CV? That thing gets too much. They now bring you in, and they have to teach you everything. They have to tell you everything. You'll be embarrassed. <laughs> they say, "Ah, they don't know that you have first class." <laughs> But just imagine they brought you in, not expecting anything from you, not believing that you can do what you say you can do. <laughs> but you stumbled into the place and you began to give it to them. And they're like, wow, this guy really, really surprised us. You will get triple promotion. Mm. They will put you above those that have, been, <laughs> that have been there for years. Why? Because you have surprised them. You carry something. And that's how a child of God should be. A child of God should be somebody that is surprised no day. Mm. That they can't tell. Why did I say that? John chapter 3, John chapter 3 verse 8, uh, 5 to 8. He said, you are like the what? The wind. Where you are coming from and where you are going, they can't tell. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. When you what? Embrace the what? The God factor. Number two. Be a hunter of knowledge. Be a hunter of what? Knowledge. Be a hunter of knowledge. Hunt for knowledge. I'm telling you the truth. You may not value it today. Nowadays, we have children, uh, those, day, those days in, in my university days, I tell many of them. Uh, I think I've seen we we'll get there. Never go for a seminar and don't try to capture as much as possible. There are so many, there are so many teachings of Dr. Miles Monroe, he's late now, that I have in my notebooks when he used to come those days to Canada to speak to us. And my book I always full. Some of them you can't find them, some of them you can't find them in any of his texts. You can't find them. Because something you there's the way you talk. And there's a way you write. <laughs> there are two different things. So anybody that can capture you when you are speaking can capture more than what is in your writings. And some of people can capture more from your writings than they can capture from your speaking. So if you are the type of person that you are capturing, it's not like Bishop Willie There are so many things some people capture from him now that he speaks that you may never be able to capture. Read all his books. I'm telling the truth. So when you are in seminars and you are able to capture what people are saying, there is a generation coming, sir. That when they hear you say those things, they, you bring them back to that. They say, we've heard this thing. Our fathers told us of Dr. Miles Moro. And the way you speak, you speak exactly. And therefore, you must have the same grace that work with such men. Just follow you. Just follow you. Why? By the power of seeking for what? Knowledge. Don't just sit down. That you are born again is not enough. Yes, you are born again, fine, but how much, what do you know? That's the truth. What do you know? The sons of Skiva, they are giving their life to Jesus. Whether we like it or not, because for them to be saying what Jesus preached, what Paul preached, that means they were listening to Paul, they were listening to Jesus. So that means they believed in Jesus and Paul. But they were empty. They were empty. It's not enough to just say, you say, what Bishop really go for, what pastor, who you preach, you know, as I, I, I decree, you this devil. Yeah, Doctor, look at yourself, eh? They will tell you, look at you. One thing, I know. You look good, look at I know. And you go in, redeem, I know. Who you be? <laughs> they ask you. Because where is your death coming from? Where is your death coming from? And when you speak, we can tell who your teachers are. When you speak, depth, knowledge. Go after it. Number three, capture a vision. Capture a vision. Capture a word. A vision. See something. The reason why people divorce in marriage is because of die vision. Two visions. The man has his own vision. The woman has his own vision. Divorce. The man has his own voice. The woman has his own voice. Divorce. <laughs> That's the truth. You need to capture a vision. You must see the same thing. You must see the same thing. I don't have time. We would have gone to Genesis 11 verse 6. When they were building the tower of Babel, they had the same voice. They had the same voice. 
That was why they were able to build. They had the same. All of them spoke one language. All of them. So capture a word, a vision, see something, see ahead, see ahead, see ahead. Capture a vision. Don't just be going to church and shouting, hey, 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 Like nowadays, when I go to church and I see two people just shouting, they are not learning anything. Many people are not learning. They are just excited about what is being said. Because the truth is that if you truly listen in church, you will find it difficult to shout sometimes. If you really want to capture, if you really want to capture. You are not the type that just moved by. You want to really capture. You want to really capture. You, you, you will not be jumping anyhow. anyhow. <laughs> when it's time for praise, that hand can jump and that one we know that yes, you But when it is time for the word that you are chanting, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong because the God's word, the, it, the one that will move you, the one that will work for you, may come at the time that you are not ready. That's the truth. That's where somebody wants to go and be. That's why somebody's child is telling me, Mommy, I want biscuits. And as you are talking like this, the world will just go. <laughs> so you have to be very careful. So you need to capture a vision. And to capture a vision means you have to be born again. To capture a vision. The only way to capture a vision as a child of God is to be born again. How? Except a man be born again, he cannot see. So you can't have vision if you are not born again. And what does it mean to be born again? Your spirit man comes alive. Spirit man comes alive again. We don't have time. Last week we spoke about you know the seven steps of speaking in tongues. That is what you know makes speaking in tongues stick. So I gave them five out of twelve, but five of them. We, why do you must speak in tongues? <laughs> Praise God. It's not for today anyway. Number four, be a committed writer. Be a committed writer. Document. Never go to church and not document. Never. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, write down the word vision. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. I, I was, tell, I was tell, telling them those days in school because, you know, 100 level, 200 level, I was very, I was fine to the world, <laughs> you know, in school. And then by 300 level and half, there, I started uh, I started campus fellowship and everybody was like how come devil became a pastor? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I told them I said one of the things that will help you in life is documentation the things you document today will be manifest tomorrow and it has happened many of them used to see me on Facebook they are like okay, you are still doing these things I said why am not? I documented them. Even if I want to stop, the documentation will not allow. It will allow. You can't document it and not manifest it. It's impossible. Write down the vision. Make it play. And then what? Wrong with it. You you will always wrong with what you document. That's the truth. You will always wrong with what you document. Show me a a woman, a a young lady was my used to be in government. I know this. I told her, you want to marry a man? He said, yes. Write with five things. That he want in him. In him. She was like, eh? She was I said, yes. Right? So she wrote it. I said, always put it in your purse. She said, why? I said, because those are the 25 things you must become. <laughs> to find him. I said, eh? And she has wrote, she has written some fantastic, <laughs> heavyweight things that <laughs> the man will need grace <laughs> to manifest. <laughs> So I said, those are the things you must manifest mm. before we show. You say why? I said because the Bible says, by their fruit yeah. we shall know them. These things that you have written are seeds. Sow them into your life. It will now grow and bear fruits. And the man that needs those fruits will find you. Will find you. Ha! She said, eh? I said that. She said, but she has written something that if you have to do that is what that is what it takes. Today, she's going to get married in two weeks time. Wow. When I saw the guy, she couldn't have wished for anything better. Grace. Mm. Just one. And she told me, she said she still has that paper. Wow. She still has that paper. She uses it for prayers. She uses it to do anything. She, and she began to she's she, she says she has not manifested all, but at least. She has manifested something. 
<laughs> she has tried to buy some documentation is key, sir. Write it. Write down the vision. Write it down. I'll keep it. Bishop Eliko always said, uh, in 1990, in 1980, in 1980, everything that we are seeing today is a product of somebody, what somebody documented yesterday. If you didn't document it, if you are not documenting that, then you are young. When I you grow, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Better document them. So that you will not be, you will not be tempted to do otherwise when you have it documented. Sir. You will tempted. There are too many things that people are telling me to do now that are in my documentation. So I know there is no people that will tell me to do it. When it is time, it will show. When it's time to show. Because they are documented. They are seeds. Why do you think all of us are giving their life to Christ? Why do people are giving their life to Christ? Because it is documented in a book called the Bible. If not for the documentations of the book, why do you think Islam is difficult to destroy? Because it has the documentation. Why do you think all of you, all of us, have left Shogo and Watala and Omura uh, and all those nonsense uh, GPS? Do you know why? There were no documentations. <laughs> they were just transplants. <laughs> they are not transplants from father to son, son to grandson, and like that. So there were no real documentations. No, no real documentations. And that's why so many of those cultures are the what? Eroded. Thrown away. There are no documentations. But look at some of them. There are so many religions in the world today that are still in man. Why? Because of documentation. Documentation. The book. Number five. Wrong with your ideas. Number five. Wrong with your ideas. Wrong with your ideas. Don't just settle. Engage your ideas. Any idea that God gives you, what do you do? Wrong with it. Wrong with it. It may not look nice today. It may not look healthy. It may not look anyhow. Wrong with what? Wrong with those ideas. Number six, very important. We said it last week to cultivate the right company. Work with the right people. Work with the right people. Don't work with people that don't have value for destiny. There are some people they are not just they are not just right to work with. I was telling him yeah, last week. I said I don't have too many friends. So, hmm? No, too many friends. If you must have friends, have people that challenge you. People that challenge you to do the right thing. People that challenge you. Not just any, you know. If you are the brightest among your friends, and you are not bright in the eyes, that you yourself know that you are not bright. That you are not sharp. But you are the sharpest among your friends. You are in the wrong company. You are in what? The wrong company. You need people that will make you sometimes look very small in your eyes. You need them. That are the people that will sharpen you up. Not the ones that are just working with Fadi Lu and Kalu Kabibu and you know, just, just, and you are looking like one local champion in the midst of blind people. <laughs> Work with people that will sharpen you up. People that when you look at them, look at Bishop Wayne Pona. If you hear his friends, you know that there's, it's not, when you, when you are talking about Kenneth Hagin. You hear Kenneth Gopla. Ah, ah. Do you know what it means to have given out that three aeroplanes out and sit to other places? One man. I'm not sure Papa has done one. Yeah, not one. They are not giving out one plane. I'm not sure. <laughs> to anybody. But he's working with somebody that has worked, that has given out that three. He's working with people like Pastor Yannibori. Papa. Show me all the people he calls his friends. All of them are far better than him. Far. They are far better. Every other person has sons. <laughs> if you talk of, uh, what is his name? The building, the energy, all those of friends are sitting. <laughs> but his friends are his fathers. His friends are his fathers. But when you are sitting down with people, that you are the best among them, and you yourself know that you are not anywhere. Then you have, you have that what you have told yourself is that this is how far I can go in life. This how far I can go. We should see your friends and see where you are going. <laughs> we should see people you, you mingle with, and we can tell, oh, this girl is going somewhere, this boy is going somewhere. 
Those are the guys that have to make friends. If you want to be a sharp entrepreneur, mingle with people that what are sharper than you. That are what sharper than you. Number six, that is cultivating the right company. Number seven, endeavor to understand marketing. Understand what marketing. I think I've said that in passing the other time. Understand what marketing. Understand marketing. Learn to market. Learn how to market. Because the truth is, people will not value you more than how you describe yourself. How you describe yourself is how people will value you. Do you know that people treat you the way you say you? That's the power of social media. You see one dirty, stinky looking girl that you know on your seat, that you yourself know that she's dirty, stinky. In quotes, I'm using that word. I know I'm using that word because I don't want to use the actual word. <laughs> so, and now she now goes on social media, goes to one hotel, nice bed, nice everything, goes into the toilet because she can't pay for. So she goes to the toilet and uses the mirror to do something. <laughs> and then the clothes appear nice. Because they use some touches of Photoshop and everything to make it like. And then she goes on social media and tells you she's mystic. And then the next thing you see is 500,000 likes, 1,800 million followers. Mm -hmm. ah! How do you do it? Self talk, self presentation. She does the package. I said, you will ne- she will never allow you to meet her in person. Mm. Forever. If you tell her that, uh, Miss, ah, how far now? Let us meet her at the. Uh, <laughs> it will go up. <laughs> it will up. Why? Because her glory is in the fake status that she has presented. Mm. Yes. So, what she's doing is what? Marketing. I said to you, even though. But the children of God, that is tongue talking, Holy Ghost speaking, grace of God, they can't even market anything. Because if somebody is making marketing fake, why can't you market your original? Market your original. Market your original. Most of the things we are doing here now, I, I publish them. Every message I preach in this place is always published. And there was a day I went to a particular church. I didn't know they even knew me. And that man said, Do you know that your message is a blessing to us? And all that excuse me. I'm not sure I've met you before. <laughs> he said, ah, We know you. We don't receive your message very well. That is called marketing. Put your best foot forward. Put something out there that people can trace to you. Learn to market. Market yourself. Number eight. Learn how to create visibility. It's also the same thing as marketing. Learn how to what? Create visibility. When you meet somebody, be able to describe yourself in one minute. Be able to create, you must be able to talk about yourself in one minute. And take advantage of that. Take advantage of people you meet. When you meet people, always do everything possible to paint, paint your picture to them. To paint your picture to them. Because the truth is, if you don't paint your picture to them, there's every tendency that they may have opportunities that only you can solve. But if you have not presented yourself to them, how will they remember you? How? How would they remember you? It was one day I was looking through the attendance. I saw that this young man is in two freelancers or something. You said you are two freelancers. What did you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> and I, I, I had to circle it. And I wanted to stick, I want to call him to find out what do you mean by freelance? <laughs> what do you freelance? <laughs> by the time I get that, it could be some, it could be a solution to something that I'm trying to do. And then you get him on board. There's a young man that came here one time and 
we he just attended like two times and uh, I couldn't find him anymore. Before I had discovered that he had gone back to school. So now that that's what it's like, he's now staying with somebody somewhere. And it's a little bit far from this place, so that's why he couldn't come. So the mother now told him that look, we are, your friends are going to do computer training. Let me go and pay for you, Diana. He said, yes, she want, he wants to do computer training, but not where his friends are going. He said, I used to attend one program somewhere. And the person is always sending something to your phone. He opened the mother's phone, showed him. He said, this is this pastor. That's why I want to do computer training. So the woman had to come, came to my office and said, how much will you take? You don't be training him, let him come into your office. See, also, it's the same business. <laughs> because as he was talking, I started thinking, how much will I call it? <laughs> because it was a business I never thought of. I couldn't even think about it. It just came from nowhere. So immediately, I've already arranged my seat, it's resuming tomorrow. So, shh. That's how it works. So you must be able to paint your picture before people. You must be able to present yourself to people in one minute. Don't be scared of telling people what you do. Don't be, don't be scared. Tell them. Sir, this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do. If you have a car, give it to them. You don't know where business will come from. Finally, register your business. I won't, I won't say this one. That, this one, register your words. Your business. Now that you are young, some of you are still young, register your business. To register a business that is very cheap. Register a business name. Now that you are young, register a business name. And then begin to watch it. By the time you finish school, now whatever, whatever, your business will have grown in age. Mm. <laughs> then by the time you want to do businesses, when you do register a business, oh, I started it, ah, 2022. And we are talking about 2027 or 2029. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, 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 and the business has been there. So, you can do a lot of things with it. So, now that you are young, start doing things. There are some of us there. It was when we became advanced in age, I was realizing that. But this is your whole generation. You must start something now. Precious time business name is easier now. Thank God that everything is easier. Get a website. Get a what? Get a website for yourself. Promote yourself on websites. One thing I found out is that all those people that do dirty business, nonsense business, they are the ones that do the right thing. Mm-hmm. In good. <laughs> they put all the structures in place. I met one funny girl. I, I, I said, how old are you? She said, 16. I was shocked. She has a website promoting nonsense. I mean, promoting nonsense, complete nonsense. But she has a good website. Her social media handles are powerful. But nothing, you can't open that site and look at it twice. <laughs> you will just born again. That your born again will just appear. That it will feed your spirit that something is going, something is going. <laughs> Yet she has followers. <laughs> she has followers. And mysteriously, the person handling her page is a very solid Christian. Wow. Born again Christian. Born again Christian. That's handling her page. Why? That one is not handling it on a moral level. That one is handling it on a how would I put it? Strictly business. No, that one, no, that one is not as, as long as you as long as the money in the bank is complete. <laughs> Whatever.